Take one man scarred by bitter memories. Add lonely footsteps in the leaves and the path of decision. That's our story, The Circle Road, taken from the files of John Steele, adventurer. <laughs> friends. This is John Steele. We're back to, back to bring you another story of intense emotional conflict. This week I have as my guest, Eddie Gard. Now, Eddie's story actually happened two or three years ago, but the way things are today, it might do us all some good if we sat down and just remembered. I was never formally introduced to Eddie. He just stepped out of the night on a lonely station platform and started talking to me. There was something about him that impressed me. So I followed up on him, and here he is to tell you about it himself. I think you'll be interested. Eddie? Some guys, when they got their discharge papers, had it all planned what they were going to do. All the months they'd been sitting in foxholes or rotten in the jungle, they planned what they were going to do when they got back and got out. Open a business, get married, buy a house, all the other stuff you heard a hundred times. Well, I had something I was going to do, but it was none of them. I was going to look up my buddy, Al Corey. I was a long time getting out because of the hospital, and the docs wanted to keep me around for a while to be sure I was all right. But when they did give me the papers, I took the first train up to Plainfield. When I got off, I asked a guy sitting in the car where the Corys lived, and he offered to drive me over. That was the longest part of the five years, a drive from the station. Friend of Al's, huh? What? I said you were a friend of Al's. Yeah. Met him in the war? We were in the same outfit. Thought I hadn't seen you before. Still in the army, huh? Nah. I thought you couldn't wear the uniform. How much farther is it, anyway? Just up the next block. Oh. Bring back any souvenirs? What? From the war? Oh, no, no, nothing important. I see. Well, here you are. Well, you want to get out? Yeah, yeah. Ought to be somebody home. Thanks. A soldier. Yeah? We got a quiet town. Keep it that way. What do you mean? That's what I said. Well, I come back, Al. Corey lives? Yes. I'd like to talk to him. Well, Al isn't home right now. When will he be back? We expect him almost any day. I'm his mother. Is there anything I can do for you? No, thanks. Al went up to Danbury to see about a job. He didn't plan to stay more than a few days. Well, I'll come back tomorrow. Wait a moment. Yeah? You're Eddie. Huh? You're Eddie, aren't you? Yeah. And I almost let you go away. I felt you were Eddie. Oh, come in. Well, I, uh... Please, come in. Jim! Oh, Jim! Oh, it's so good to finally meet you, Eddie. After all we've heard about you, and Al was never sure you were... Jim! Come in the living room. What is it, dear? It's Eddie. Who? This is Al's father. Jim, it's Eddie. Well, I'm certainly glad to meet you. Hello, Eddie. Hello. For months we've heard Eddie this, Eddie that. It's years now. Alan will be so happy. Think he will? I can't wait till he gets back. Perhaps we ought to send him a telegram, Jim. I know you'll... Good idea. No, 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 don't do that. I'm sure son would want to... I'll hang around town till he gets back. I want to, uh, you know, give him a surprise. We understand. Of course. Uh, If you'll tell me where I can find a hotel... Hotel? uh... That's simply ridiculous. You're staying here, Eddie. No, I'd We wouldn't think of having you stay in a hotel, would we, Jim? Certainly not. Well, I think I'd better go... That may be Alan now. I'll let him in. Well, come on, Eddie. I'll show you... Well, what's wrong? Get back. A pain in your chest? Let me see. All right, get back. Well, what is it? Just stay where you are. And I know you'll want to meet him, too, dear. Yes, I do. Isn't it wonderful? Virginia, this is Eddie. Virginia lives across the street. Yeah, I know. Hello. He calls you Ginny. Virginia, you stay for dinner. We'll all have a grand time. You will, won't you? What? Stay for dinner. Yes, I'll stay. Good. Come on, Eddie. 
Huh? I'll show you your room. Oh, yeah, yeah. And take your time, Ed. We don't hurry around here. Up this way. Nice place. I'm sure it's better than the last time you and Alan saw each other. Yeah. The door to the right. This is Al's room. We haven't a guest room. It's nice. You can share it when Al gets back. I think he'd want it that way. Yeah. Bath is through that door and the closet's over there. Thanks. I'm glad you came. I think Alan has needed you, Eddie. So we'll see. He hasn't been the same since he came back. Sometimes we don't understand him anymore. Maybe there's a reason. I know you boys don't like to talk about it, but it seems... I know my son, and you know him. He's been going around in circles ever since he came back. I'm sure you'll be a wonderful help. I will. I'm sure of it. But you're tired. You want to rest up. I'm okay. Here, now, give me your coat, and I... What? What's that? Nothing. I didn't mean to let it fall out of your coat. I... It's a gun, isn't it? Yeah. It's an ugly thing. It's kind of pretty when you need it. Neat little revolver. What on earth are you carrying a thing like that around for? It's, uh, it's a souvenir. I, uh, I was going to give it to Al. It isn't loaded, is it? No, just a souvenir. Oh. Well, I'll call you when dinner's ready. Make yourself completely at home. I will. I come back, Al. I come back. It was a good dinner Al's mother served up that night, and the talk around the table was mostly about me and Al and what Al would say when he saw me. They had plenty of guesses, but I knew what he'd say. After dinner, there was still talk, and I couldn't take any more of that, so I got up to go for a walk. Ginny, the girl, offered to go along and show me the sights of the town. That was fine by me. She was Al's girl. And everything's on Main Street, just like any other small town. But the people are nice. You don't take a good picture. What? The one Al had that made you look mousy. It's the only one I had when he left. Besides, maybe I've changed in five or six years. Yeah. Al always said you were going to get married when he came back. You're not, are you? No. Why not? Didn't work out. That's no answer. It was different. Something had changed, that's all. Somebody else? I don't know. No, come on. What? This looks good enough. Don't you want to walk? Yeah, maybe. Later. Let's have a drink. I don't know about this place. I've never been inside. It's a bar, isn't it? Come on. All right, Ed. <laughs> yes, sir, wouldn't it be? A double... Uh, what do you have, Jack? Nothing, thanks. A double rye, huh? Right away. I always wondered what this place looked like inside. Well, now you can say you know. Hey, no, soldier, old soldier. Still fighting the war for us? Beat it. You know, I was going to fight... Look, you want to get hurt? Ed... Oh, excuse me, excuse me. You got a girl to talk to, huh? <laughs> Lush. There you are, soldier. Thank you. Well, here's luck, baby. Ed. Yeah? What do you want? I don't want anything. Why'd you come then? I wanted to see Al. Yes. Wanted to look up my old buddy... Why didn't you come before this? I came as quick as I could. The war's been over a year and a half. Has it? Were you hurt? In a hospital? You don't mind. I'd rather not talk about it. Of course it. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Right. Yeah, I was hurt. You don't have to. I want to. Funny thing. Back in the Army, you know, you don't talk much. Everybody's going through the same thing. There's no need to. I guess I'd forgotten what it's like to talk to somebody that wasn't there. Doesn't know what it was all about. Were you badly hurt? No, oh, there were a lot hurt worse. Leg? How'd you know? I don't limp. Only a little. Yeah. I've learned to use it pretty good. You're the first one that's known. I'm sorry. What's there to be sorry about? I'm here, ain't I? 
Are you sure you want to see Al? Oh, yeah, I want to see him. I don't think you should. That's where you're wrong, baby. Hey, soldier, old soldier boy. Oh, let go of me. Just want to buy you a drink. Thought I told you to beat it. Ah, don't get sore, soldier boy. War's over. How would you know about it? Ed. Don't you get tough, huh? That's the trouble with you guys. Get out of here. He doesn't understand. Get out. Who do you think you're shoving? Please. Lousy bum. Ed. War's over. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ed. Oh, Ed, you shouldn't. Hey, what's the matter with you? Lousy, lush. You stay right where you are, mister. I'm calling the cops. Please, if you'll just let us... You can't do things like Please, that. Please, if you... Cops will straighten them out. Who's he think he is? Took so long getting down, Ed. Mother and I were all ready for bed when Jenny called. Yeah. Sergeant Howard is a nice fella. I guess so. Now, don't worry about it, Ed. Doesn't mean a thing. What? Son did the same thing when he got home. Did? Sure. I was kind of worried first time it happened, but after a while, I... <laughs> I guess I got used to dragging myself out of bed in the middle of the night. Hasn't happened for some time now. Got anything planned for tomorrow? What? Saturday, you know. I didn't know but what you and Jenny might have... Uh... No. Well, the high school's got a football game with Maplewood. Did you play football? No. And let's see. Hunting season opens tomorrow. That's what Al and I usually do. You done much hunting? No, no. You say, you got a lot to do here in Plainfield. You want to give it a try tomorrow? Uh... Oh, that's all right, I understand. I guess you boys have had your fill of killing. What? I understand. Well, maybe you and Jenny can take in the football game if son doesn't get home. Yeah, maybe. Nice girl, that Jenny. Yeah. She'll make a mighty fine wife for some young fella. You know, I, I, was, I was thinking. What? If you haven't got any other plans, why don't you stay around Plainfield for a while, Eddie? We would be glad to have you at the house. Alan would be happy, too. Oh, no, I, uh, I got plans. Well, you know best. Oh, <laughs> almost missed the house. I'll, uh, I'll get the garage door. No, no, we'll just leave it out here overnight. Uh, just one thing, Eddie. Yeah? Uh, don't mention nothing about this to Mother. I told her if you'd gone out without any money and were, were stuck downtown with a bill you couldn't pay. Okay? Sure. Sure. Certain things we men learn it's better to keep from the women, huh? Yeah. Mr. Corey, uh... Yes, Eddie? I, uh... I just want to say that I'm, uh... I'm sorry. Now, don't worry about it, Eddie. Take a little time, but... You'll get back on your feet again. I know you will. Yeah. Well, good night, Mr. Corey. Good night, son. I walked into the room, Al's room, and for the first time since it happened, I felt something good for somebody. I walked around the room looking at his things. A baseball hanging on the wall, somebody written on it, no hit, no run game, pitched by Al Corey. Picture of a football team with Al in the middle, holding a football underneath it. Plainfield High School, 1936, Group 3 champion. Mrs. Corey left a pair of pajamas on the chair and a glass of milk and some crackers on the table. This was the way to live. It wasn't until I sat down on the bed and took the harness off my leg that it all came back. I shoved the harness under the bed and pulled the blankets up to my chin, but the room was cold and I was shivering. I lay there telling myself it couldn't happen again. I'd almost gone soft and it couldn't happen again. I must have fallen asleep as I remember dreaming about running and jumping and playing football. Next thing I knew, somebody was standing in the room and talking to me. My goodness, you like a cold room. It must be 20 below in here. Huh? Wait till I set this down. I'll close the window. I guess all boys are alive. Did you have enough blankets? What time is it? 11 o'clock. I thought Al I... back yet? No. I thought I'd better wake you if you're going to the game. What? Dad went hunting this morning. He said you'd probably go to the game. Oh. Now, you get up and wash your face. I brought you your breakfast. 
Mrs. Corey, I... I uh... don't spoil my men all week long, but this is their day. Come on now, get up. Uh, will you go on downstairs? I'll get up. I was going to stay with you while you ate. Oh. Do you mind? No. That's good. Now, come on. Get up. Um, I'll, uh, I'll eat. And I'll wash later. Army certainly taught you boys bad habits. <laughs> Here, let me fix that pillow behind you. Hey, that's better. Now, can you balance this on your lap? Yeah. Did Dad bring you enough money last night? What? Your bill downtown. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure, he brought enough. That's good. Did you have a good time? Yeah. Sure? Yeah, why? I don't know. The way you're acting this morning. And then something Virginia said. What about Virginia? She said she didn't think you'd be staying long. When would she say that? This morning. What else did she say? Nothing. Did she say anything about why I came back? No. You're not eating, Eddie. Did I say something that upset you? Mrs. Corey, I gotta That's get... That's so formal. Why don't you call me mother? No. What's the matter, Eddie? Get out of here, will you? Get out of here and leave me alone. All right, Eddie, if that's what you want. We're happy to have you here. We know you can help all of us by helping Alan. He needs it. What about me? What about me? Come on, come on, will you? Yes? I want to talk to you. I'm sorry, Ed. I don't want to talk well, to you. that's too bad. You're gone. That's the way you do it in the Army. Yeah, come to think of it, it is. Well, this is Plainfield. Will you please leave before... Shut up. Go on and then sit down. I will not. Come on. Whatever you want to say, please say it and get out. I'll leave when I'm through. That's something in your favor. Now sit down. Yes, Sergeant. Now, what's the idea of poking your nose in somebody else's business? What do you mean? You know what I mean? You talked to Mrs. Corey this morning. Is that against the law? You talked to her about me. I only said I thought you'd be leaving soon. What else did you say to her? Nothing. You told her about last night. I did not. You're lying. You told her why I came back to Plainfield. Didn't you? Why did you come back here? That's my business. I don't think it is. Yeah, you wouldn't understand. Maybe. Look, Ed. I'm awfully sorry for you with your maid. Don't be. I'm afraid of you, too. Afraid? He hit that man at the bar last night. He had a comment. He wanted to buy you a drink. Oh, he stared I know what he said, and he was right. The war is over. I don't know why you came to, back to see Al, but I'm afraid. Why? Something in you. Vicious, I don't know. You're crazy. I... I don't want you to be afraid of me. I don't want to be. What's between Al and myself has nothing to do with you and me. I think it has. No, it hasn't. You and me were right here today. Al, well, that happened back during the war. Then leave it there. I can't. I see. Now, Ginny. I think you'd better go. Why? You're different, Ed. You're not like us. You don't belong in Plainfield or any other town like it. What? I don't know whether the war made you this way or if you were like this before, what but... What way? Mean and ugly. <sighs> Sorry, Ed. I didn't want to say that. Please go. Sure, I'll go. Not until I told you a few things. I said last night it was good to talk to somebody that wasn't there, didn't know what it was all about. Well, I've changed my mind. Oh, sure, the war was tough on you. You give up a couple of gallons of gas, a pint of heavy cream. How do you know what it feels like to fight when you don't even know what you're fighting for? You'd be cold and hungry with your clothes crawling with lice and your food like a, like a cold baseball in your stomach, and you fight anyway. How do you know what it feels like to have your leg shot off? And all because a lousy yellow rat was supposed to cover you, but he didn't because he didn't have the guts! Sure, I'll go. And glad to. I don't know how long or how far 
I walked, an hour, five hours, I don't know. All the time I could hear her saying it over and over again. Mean and ugly, mean and ugly. Me? I passed the football field and I could hear the crowd yelling in the distance. Somebody stopped me, a cop, I don't know, asked me if I wanted to see the game. Away from the field, the streets were empty, and the leaves said the words under my feet, mean and ugly, mean and ugly. Me. Ginny said I didn't belong in Plainfield. Maybe she was right, I didn't know. A gang of kids went down the street in a Model T singing high school songs, and I knew the game was over. The air had turned cold, and my leg was beginning to hurt. Maybe she was right. When I got back to the Corys, the house was empty. There was a note on the hall table from Mrs. Corey saying that she'd be back in time to get dinner. I went upstairs to my room, Al's room, and I got my toothbrush out of the bathroom and shirt off the chair and put him in the musette bag. I started writing him a note, then I heard the front door open and his voice. Mom? Mom? The gun under my jacket was pressing hard against Mom? my ribs. I forgot Jimmy. Hey, forgot his everybody? mother and father. Forgot everything but him. What? I took the gun out, twirled the chamber, and started down the stairs. My leg ached. Is that you, Mom? No, Al, it's me. Ed? Yeah. I come back, Al. I come back. What took you so long? I've been in the hospital. You all right now? Oh, yeah. Glad you're back on your feet. <laughs> they aren't both mine. Oh. They uh, made me a leg. Say I'm almost as good as new. Except I can't run. Won't be able to teach my kid how to play football. Can't even hunt. I'm sorry. Ed. Yeah, it's too bad. Used to be pretty good at football. Been a long time, hasn't it, Al? Yeah. I remember the last time I saw you. All I could see was the seat of your pants. <laughs> Funniest thing I ever saw. It's not the way I like to remember it, buddy. Guess not. I hear you had a pretty tough time settling down. Kind of going around in circles. Funny. You got a lot of things here most guys don't have. Good home, good mother, father. Nice girl across the street should have been easy. It wasn't. That's too bad. Look, Ed, everyone has his own problem. You've been my biggest one. Yeah? I know if you were alive, someday you were going to come back. Couldn't get straightened out until this was settled one way or another. Then you ought to be glad to see me. I think I am. <laughs> oh, I, I know what you think of me. Probably you're right. But I can say I was more worried about what would happen to Mother and Dad when you came back than I was about me. I mean it. Now that you're here, I'm glad you are. You're bluffing. No. I don't know what happened to me that day. Just had all I could take, I guess, and I ran. But I'm not scared now. You're not? No, Ed. I don't think you know what it is to be afraid. You're tough. You can take it. I'm tough. Yeah. You're not. No. I'm sorry you were hurt, Ed. Sorry. Always thought a lot about you. As hard as you were, there was just nothing mean about you. Mean? Yeah. I didn't like being guy who let you down. Maybe that wasn't your fault. Look, kid, I'm getting out of here. 
Just stand where you are and don't say a word, because I might change my mind. Ed, Shut you... up. Just do me one favor, will you? You see your mother and father. Tell them the next time they raise a son, teach him how to be a man. Don't let him find out for himself. Goodbye, Al. Excuse me, mister. Is this aside from New York? That's right. What's the next train? Be along in a minute. Take it windows closed. You can get one on the train. Thanks. 101st Infantry, hmm? Yeah. Your outfit had a tough time. Yeah. You from around here? No. Nice town, Plainsville. Well, here she comes. Let me give you a hand. I got it. calling you? Huh? Eddie! Oh, Eddie, I've been looking all over for you. Ginny. Oh, I'm coming with you. No. Al told me what you did. I'm coming with you. No, baby. I was wrong, Eddie. I was so wrong. No, no, you were right. I got a lot to learn about being a civilian. I'll help you. I'm not even sure it'll work. This is something I got to do alone. Coming, soldier? Yep. I'll wait for you, Eddie. Well, that's up to you, baby. I'll wait for you. My then I'll be back. Jenny, did you hear me? I'll be back. The Circle Road, the story of a man who learned that the handbook of battle is not the manual of peace. Well, friends, if you liked Eddie's story, why not come back again next week? I'll have the story of a man who sacrificed his integrity among men for a mission of honor. I like to call it Cargo X. So until next week, this is John Steele saying a life of adventure is yours for the asking, wherever you find it. Only don't look for it. It may find you. Well, goodbye and good hunting. John Steele Adventurer is produced by Robert Monroe, written and directed by Elliot Drake. John Larkin was heard as Eddie. Also in our cast were Jim Bowles, Joyce Gordon, Abby Lewis, and Ross Martin. John Steele is played by Don Douglas. Musical effects were created by Doc Whipple, and your announcer is Ted Melly. Remember, next week, Mutual presents Cargo X, another story of suspense and action from the files of John Steele, Adventurer. This program came from New York. Follow clues down Mutual's mystery lane to further thrills and chills. Along the Sunday Avenue of mystery and suspense are Martin Kane, the two-fisted gumshoe, the shadow in a cloak of invisibility, true detective mysteries with real-life cases, and Nick Carter, master detective. Weekdays here, I Love a Mystery, every night over most of these same stations with the fabulous adventurers Jack, Doc, and Reggie in eerie investigations. Remember, all roads lead to Mutual when you travel the mystery trail where the announcer says, this is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>